Homeostasis by Annalise Fowley. What is homeostasis? Homeostasis is a process by which the body maintains a state of equilibrium internally, whilst interacting with the external environment and adapting to internal changes. Systems which are maintained include blood pressure regulation, thermoregulation, glucose regulation and osmotic regulation. My focus will be on the blood pressure regulation in giraffe. Blood pressure keeps the blood flowing through all parts of the body so that the cells of the body can receive the oxygen and nutrients needed to sustain life. Humans share similar circulatory systems with giraffes. What separates us from them, however, is the environment they live in and their lifestyle, pushing their circulatory system to the extreme end of the scope. Giraffes browse acacia leaves and gain an advantage over rival herbivores due to their height. Adult giraffes are 5 to 6 metres tall. The heart of the giraffe must be capable of delivering sufficient oxygen-rich blood 3 metres up to the brain. With the head being so high in the air, the blood pressure is extremely high at the heart and lowest at the head. This would be a problem when the giraffe was head down drinking water, as the increased pressure in the neck and head puts the giraffe in risk of a burst blood vessel. Equally, the blood vessels in the lower legs are under great pressure due to the weight of fluid pressing down on them. In other animals, such pressure would force the blood out through the capillary walls. Giraffes, however, have significant adaptations, including reinforced artery walls, bypass and anti-pooling valves, and pressure-sensing blood vessels that keep adequate blood flow to the brain at just the right pressure, which ensures such disruptions will not occur. How is blood pressure regulated? Both divisions of the autonomic nervous system, the parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous system, regulate blood pressure. They act like the gas and brake pedals in a vehicle by increasing and decreasing the blood pressure when it begins to move outside the equilibrium point. The aortic arch and carotid sinus are very important for learning how a giraffe is able to maintain balance in their blood pressure. Let's take a look. Take a closer look at the parts of the system that help regulate blood pressure. Now, if you were to look closely at the carotid sinus and aortic arch under a microscope, you would see nerve endings on the outer layer of the vessel. These nerve endings create two large nerves known as baroreceptors. Baroreceptors respond to the stretching of the arterial wall. If the pressure goes above the normal set point, the walls of these vessels passively expand, which increases the frequency of signals that indicate the pressure is high. If the arterial blood pressure suddenly falls, decreased stretch of the arterial wall leads to a decreased, fre decreased frequency of signal that indicates the pressure is low. The body has a few strategies for when this occurs, which can be summed up in the autonomic nervous system. The signals sent from the baroreceptors are sent to a part of the body, part of the brain, called the vasomotor centre, a portion of the medulla that regulates or modulates blood pressure and cardiac function, primarily via the autonomic nervous system. There are two major parts of the autonomic nervous system. One is called the sympathetics whilst the other is called parasympathetics. A decrease in arterial pressure results in decreased baroreceptor firing. Autonomic neurons within the vasomotor respond by increasing sympathetic outflow, hence increasing heart rate and blood pressure. In contrast, an increase in arterial pressure results in increased baroreceptor firing. Autonomic neurons respond by increasing parasympathetic outflow, hence decreasing heart rate and blood pressure. When the sympathetic system is activated, these autonomic changes cause vasoconstriction. Arterials constrict, causing systemic vascular resistance to increase cardiac output. An increase of cardiac output leads to an increase of blood pressure. When the parasympathetic system is activated, the autonomic changes cause vasodilation. Arterials dilate, causing systemic vascular resistance to decrease. 
letter, these changes decrease cardiac output. A decrease of cardiac output leads to a decrease of blood pressure. Let's take a look at this put into a feedback loop. Two scenarios could be considered. One, when the blood pressure is high, or two, when the blood pressure is low. Let's take a look when the blood pressure is high. The stimulus shows that the draft's blood pressure exceeds the normal set point of about 240 over 160. The detector, being the baroreceptors, detect the stretching of the arterial wall. Stretching of the arterial wall increases the frequency of signals that increase that indicate the blood pressure is high. The processor, being the vasomotor center, receives the signals from the baroreceptors. In response, the parasympathetic system is activated. When the parasympathetic system is activated, the autonomic changes cause vasodilation, causing the vascular resistance to decrease. Later, these changes decrease cardiac output. In response, the blood pressure decreases back to its normal set point. The home range of a giraffe is not permanent, as the herd must migrate when food sources diminish. This gener generally includes river crossings. When giraffes cross rivers, they have a higher chance of being attacked by crocodiles, resulting in a serious injury. Not only are they vulnerable when crossing rivers, but more than often when drinking from rivers. This places them in a position of extreme vulnerability to predators, for it requires much effort and precious time to get into this position and regain an upright posture when they have finished drinking. Due to the strength of a crocodile's jaw and sharp teeth, it is possible for an artery to get punctured, such as the aortic artery or carotid sinus in the giraffe's neck. Both scenarios could cause such serious wounds, resulting in a large amount of blood loss. To counteract this, the homeostatic system will increase the blood pressure to try and compensate the blood that has been lost. However, this will only cause the giraffe to bleed faster. Let's take a look at this in a feedback loop. The stimulus being the giraffe's blood pressure drops below the normal set point of about 240 over 160. The detector being the baroreceptors detect the decreased expansion of the arterial wall. Decreased expansion of the arterial wall decreases the frequency of the signal that indicates the blood pressure is low. The processor, being the vasomotor center, receives signals from the baroreceptors. In response, the sympathetic system is activated. When the sympathetic system is activated, the autonomic changes cause vasoconstriction, causing vascular resistance to increase. Later, these changes increase cardiac output. Blood pressure does not rise due to the excessive blood loss through the wound. This means that instead of restoring the blood pressure to equilibrium, the rate at which the blood is lost has increased. The homeostatic system has therefore failed. In order for a giraffe to drink, it must lower its head below its heart. From this action, an increase in blood pressure is to be expected. Fortunately, the giraffe has multiple adaptations to counteract the increase in blood pressure in the head. A network of elastic blood vessels, called the rato mirabile, are able to adjust the capacity of the cardiovascular system. This is done by expanding and shrinking the blood vessels, which, in turn, changes the volume of the blood entering the brain. Without this elasticity, the blood vessels in the giraffe's head would burst. The walls of the blood vessels also thicken with age as the giraffe's neck grows longer to avoid rupturing under increasing pressure. Due to the large height difference between the heart and the giraffe's head and the heart and the giraffe's legs, two problems are created. One, the giraffe's heart must cope with the pressure exerted on it by the amount of blood in such a tall neck. And two, for blood to reach the head, the heart must then beat strongly enough to overcome the significant downward pressure caused by gravity. A giraffe's heart has evolved to have thick muscle walls and a small radius, 
giving it great power and hence enabling it to pump oxygen-rich blood throughout the body. Without these adaptations, it would not be possible for the giraffe to survive. If the giraffe were to lower its head to drink, the blood vessels would not be able to withstand the pressure and hence burst. Conversely, when the giraffe is standing in its upright orientation, the blood would not be able to reach the brain, causing lightheadedness and eventually cause the giraffe to faint, leading to death. As well as this, the lower body arterioles are under great pressure which could lead to pooling of blood. Fortunately, giraffes have evolved these adaptations to compensate their tall body. These adaptations enable the giraffe to take full advantage of their long neck. For example, when feeding, they are capable of eating food that is out of reach for other animals. Also allows them an elevated view of their surroundings, which is an advantage for sighting predators from a distance. As well as this, their long neck will help them with thermoregulation as it provides a large surface area to lose heat in the hot sun. In turn, these adaptations will help with the survival of the giraffe as they decrease the energy used for regulating the blood pressure. This means that the giraffe's energy surplus will increase, which, in turn, increases the amount of energy to be used for reproduction, increasing its chance of reproduction to then further increase the number of the species.